Hello everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm so happy that you've joined me today. I hope you guys are having an amazing day or night wherever you are. Today's video is a cheat sheet on how you can create a full routine if you're a beginner to skincare. This is dedicated to all you beginners to skincare. I get a lot of questions in my DMs and comment section and I really wanted to make this video for so long. I get so many questions from you guys. What's a beginner friendly face wash? What ingredients do I look for if I'm a beginner? What's the potency that I have to go for? All of these questions are gonna be answered in today's video. Now, if you're watching me for the first time, then hi, my name's Preeti. Welcome to my channel. I talk about all things cruelty-free, which means products that are not tested on animals. I also talk a lot about minimalism, minimal skincare routines, shout out to local brands and a lot more things. If this is something you want to watch more of, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel and continue watching today's video. All right, let's get started. Now, the first thing that you need to do is invest in two different face washes. This is extremely important. This is something that I speak about a lot on Instagram as well. Now, the first face wash is super gentle. Maybe it has hyaluronic acid, ceramides, glycerin, uh, maybe a little bit of oatmeal and all of that stuff. Very gentle, nothing over the top. No actives, no AHA, BHA, vitamin C, benzoyl peroxide, nothing. It needs to be super simple. Now, this is something that you can use in your AM skincare routine because in the morning, you don't want to use something too hard mainly because you've done all of that skincare routine at night and you really need that goodness to sink in. A simple face wash is perfect for all weathers, all skin types, all skincare routines and a must-have for AM. Now that you have that sorted for the PM routine, look for ingredients like BHAs or AHAs to exfoliate your skin. This is a must-have in face washes in the PM routine. Maybe you can use this two to three times a week if you have oily, acne-prone skin, skin that is more prone to congestion, whiteheads and blackheads, then AHAs and BHAs are a must. So now that you have two face washes, you can easily move around with this. With the AHA or BHA face wash, it is best to use it in your PM routine because you're gonna do an intensely moisturizing routine. And also you wanna remove all of that gunk, all of that trapped sebum, all of that leftover pollution and makeup from your skin after double cleansing. So BHA face wash is fantastic. You can also use AHA and BHA face washes, but I don't recommend them for every single day use. For my routine, I like to use a BHA face wash every alternate night or an AHA face wash on alternate nights when I'm not using a BHA and in the morning I use a very lightweight no actives face wash this is perfect for every skin type the second tip is to double cleanse your makeup and sunscreen I cannot emphasize enough on this tip this is a basic tip in every single skincare routine of mine because it is so essential even if you don't apply a lot of waterproof makeup like waterproof mascara waterproof lipstick waterproof eyeliner you still have to double cleanse if you're gonna use a sunscreen even if you're not using a waterproof sunscreen, a lot of hybrid filters need to be double cleansed. Now, if you're not gonna use a double cleansing method, you're gonna use a basic face wash after micellar water and then wash your face. You're still gonna have so much residue on your skin and that's not good in the long run. You can develop clogged pores, a lot of melia, a lot of bacterial infection in your lashes and the list goes on. You need to invest in a double cleansing oil, a double cleansing balm or butter. Use that all over your face, add some water, emulsify, wash that off, and then go in with a nice face wash. If you have oily skin, then go in with a BHA-based face wash. If you have a lot of texture, AHA-based face wash. And if you have just normal skin, nothing over the top, sensitive skin, then a normal face wash with no actives. Double cleansing will improve your skin texture. It's gonna make you age a whole lot better. It's gonna reduce a lot of fine lines. It's gonna improve the quality of your skin. Your skin is not gonna feel very congested because if you don't double cleanse, there's a high possibility of that. I have a whole detailed video on my favorite cleansers, balms, and oils in the Indian market. Do check it out if you haven't already. I think it's about one or two years old. I'm guessing two years old. I really want to make an updated version with all the new cleansing balms and oils that I've been trying. Let me know if you'd like to see it. Number three is extremely important. Use big enough friendly formulations in your actives, especially in serums. There are a lot of moisturizers in the Indian market and the international market that have vitamin C, AHA, retinol. Those are very low potency, very beginner friendly. You can easily incorporate them. But if you're looking at serums, you have to be really careful. You cannot go ahead with a 15 to 20% vitamin C. You cannot use a 2% retinol, 3% BHA, 10% glycolic acid. That's gonna be so harmful for your skin. You need to start incorporating lower potencies, maybe like a 1%, 2%, 3%, and gradually increase it only if you need to. The whole idea of a skincare routine is to improve your barrier and protect your skin. Let's not forget that. We want to improve the texture, we want to improve the quality of the skin, we want to reduce acne, but at the same time we need to protect our barrier. That is so, so important. Very often people forget about that and immediately want to target the acne, the texture, but forget about the barrier. And with a high potency, you will damage your barrier. There's a new cruelty-free Indian skincare brand that I've absolutely been loving. I've been testing it out for a few weeks. It's called R.O. 
a skincare and I absolutely love their formulations. They have a very nice approach to skincare with beginner friendly formulations. The whole idea for them is to minimize your skincare layers, your skincare steps and to simplify your routines. Even if you're not a beginner to skincare, if you're lazy with your skincare routines or you have a super hectic schedule, you're a working person and you want to do skincare on the go, then this brand is the perfect match for you. What I love about them is that their formulations are very beginner friendly, very simple fragrance free making it perfect for all skin types even sensitive skin i've been trying out four different serums from the brand that i want to talk to you guys about but very quickly this is what the packaging looks like the outer packaging fantastic very minimal all the info is right here not too cluttered detailed ingredient list on the outer packaging as well as the bottle the first serum is glow it's got two percent alpha butin it's got two percent niacinamide and three percent hyaluronic acid this is a fantastic combination if you want to reduce those marks on your skin even out your complexion and add that hydration to your skin. Alpha butin is one of my favorite ingredients to fade all those dark spots, uneven tan lines, hyperpigmentation because it reduces that excessive melanin production. This is one of my most used ingredients when I want to fade marks, hyperpigmentation. I've spoken so much about this ingredient for many years on YouTube. Niacinamide helps to even out your complexion, brighten it, fade those marks. It also helps to improve your skin texture and regulate that sebum production. So if you have oily skin that gets a lot of acne and you want to fade those acne marks, then this is a serum for you. If you have melasma, this is a serum for you. If you have a lot of uneven tan, you've come from a beach holiday, then this is a serum for you too. Now the Glow Serum also has Centella, which is very, very calming. It's such a good ingredient to reduce inflammation and calm the skin in case of any irritation. You don't have to layer another hyaluronic acid. This has 3% hyaluronic acid. So you'll notice that the formulation is pretty all-inclusive. You don't have to layer multiple serums with this. The next one is Ageless. It's an exfoliating serum. It's got 2% glycolic acid, 2% willow bark extract, and 5% mulberry extract. Glycolic acid is an alpha hydroxy acid, AHA, which helps to exfoliate the surface of your skin it's going to reduce all of that texture hyperpigmentation now willow bark extract is a natural form of salicylic acid which is a beta hydroxy acid it's got salicylin which goes deep into your pores and exfoliates all of that gunk removes all of that trapped sebum and it refreshes your pores fantastic if you have acne prone skin if you have a lot of texture on your skin mulberry extract helps to improve your skin texture it gives you that brighter complexion all of these ingredients together are very low on potency, which means you're not going to trouble your skin, especially if you're a beginner. I would recommend using this once or twice a week initially, and then you can go about incorporating this every alternate day. If you're a beginner, I wouldn't suggest immediately moving into every single day, but slowly as you progress, maybe by the fourth week, you can use it every single night. And gradually you'll notice that your skin texture is improving and then you can reduce this to maybe once or twice a week now if you have acne prone skin like mine then this is going to be a serum for you it's called acne clean it's got two percent salicylic acid one percent hyaluronic acid three percent licorice root extract i recommend using this in your nighttime skincare routine with bhas nighttime is the best of course you can use it in am as well as pm in case you're working indoors and not traveling now like i mentioned earlier bha beta hydroxy acid goes into your pores exfoliates the pores but then it goes deep into your pores AHAs only exfoliate the surface of your skin so this is going to reduce all of that trapped sebum reduce skin texture reduce whiteheads and blackheads licorice root extract is fantastic if you want to brighten your skin tone even out your complexion this is fantastic to fade those acne marks so while you're reducing texture combating acne you're also going to be fading marks simultaneously with hyaluronic acid added in the serum it's extremely nourishing very hydrating you don't have to buy another hyaluronic acid serum and the next one is a vitamin c serum it's got a nice tinted bottle to protect it from oxidizing however it's a very stable formulation it's got 10 percent vitamin c perfect for beginners it's got 3o ethyl ascorbic acid a very stable derivative one of my favorite derivatives of vitamin c it's also very very effective along with that it's got kakadu plum it's got kamu kamu it's got orange extracts as well this entire ingredient list is fantastic if you want to add that glow to your skin all of a sudden if you feel your skin is lacking all of that glow you just feel dull out of nowhere maybe because you've been traveling a lot if your diet has been a little haywire maybe you've had a few rough days you've cried yourself to sleep whatever it is this ingredient list is going to give you that glow it's also so beginner friendly not just that it's got centella to calm any inflammation any
any redness. Along with that, it's got alpha arbutin, one of my favorite ingredients again. Alpha arbutin is going to reduce that excessive melanin production. It's going to fade dark spots and dark marks. And this along with vitamin C, match made in heaven. One of my favorite combinations is vitamin C with alpha arbutin. Honestly, it's such a potent combination. There's no hard and fast rule per se. You can use vitamin C in AM as well as PM routine. However, if you're going to use AHAs or BHAs, retinol, then do not layer this with that. I would suggest using this or the other serum which has alpha arbutin the glow serum in your am routine and the other ones the ageless and acne serum you can use that in your pm routines this way you get the best of both worlds you get the brightening effect you get the texture reduction and acne reduction effect as well all of these serums have an amazing texture very lightweight non-sticky they sink into the skin like a dream super easy to layer in skincare routines i love the price point i love the fact that it's a homegrown indian brand i love that they have beginner friendly formulations and it's completely fragrance free check out the description i'm going to link everything there you can check the website learn more about the brand it is honestly such an underrated launch of 2023 now apart from these serums if you want to include retinol start with something that is less than one person a retinol serum should never be started with a two person that's going to be really hardcore for your skin start with a 0.8 percent 0.5 0.8 percent once or twice a week in the nighttime skincare routine don't layer it with vitamin c don't layer it with anti-acne serums don't layer it with bhas ahas nothing and slowly by the fourth week by the fifth week sixth week you can increase this to one percent and over a period of six to seven months if you feel like your skin needs it then include a two percent but honestly even i don't use a two person every single day i stick with a 0.81 percent every single night or every other night and maybe once a week i'll do a two percent or once or twice a week i'll do a two percent now number four in the beginner skincare routine is a good sunscreen do not skip sunscreen you guys with all the actives that you're going to be using taking such good care of your skin you have to use a good sunscreen using ahas bhas retinol vitamin c all of that it sensitizes your skin especially if you're a beginner and if you're continuously using exfoliants and even if you're not using exfoliants the uva and uvb rays are so harmful they will tan your skin increase melanin production and obviously the big c word you do not want skin cancer guys there's so much research online a lot of people feel that sunscreen is just for the aesthetic it's just another product in the market but honestly it is a very underrated and a must-have product for every single person regardless if they're going to do detailed skincare routines or not how I like to go about my sunscreens is I use waterproof solid zinc sunscreens when I'm going for beach holidays, surfing, swimming, or if I'm going outdoors for an activity which is going to make me sweat a lot. And if I'm not doing any of that, then I use hybrid sunscreens or just basic chemical sunscreen for that dewy look on my skin because I know I'm not going to be sweating a lot. And if you're not going to use waterproof sunscreens, you will have to reapply every one and a half, two hours because you're going to sweat. And also the absorption. You're going to be touching your face, wiping your sweat. You have to reapply. With waterproof sunscreen, I think four to six hours, one application every four to six hours is more than enough. So when do you use sunscreens? When you're sitting in front of these big windows, like I sit in front of a massive window with my studio lights and I always use sunscreen. It's really important, guys, if you're sitting in front of a big window, if you're sitting in your balcony for long hours, if you're in an office space where you're right next to a window and you don't pull down the roller blind, so then you have the sunlight in your face, not good at all. If you drive to work in the morning and back, you have to apply sunscreen just because you're in a car doesn't mean you shouldn't apply sunscreen whether it's a rainy day whether it's a winter day sunny day you have to apply your sunscreen in any of these scenarios if you're sitting really far away from the window for example if i'm sitting in the other room if my curtains are drawn i don't have to apply sunscreen in daytime it's really not needed and while you're at it at the ending of the day double cleanse your sunscreens you will thank me later now number five is using a good toner and a sensor toners are not necessarily a must-have it's not something that you cannot live without in your routine how However, if you are going to buy a toner, look for something that is calming and hydrating. Don't look for a random lightweight toner. Look for something that has probiotics, rice water, niacinamide, centella, a little bit of mugwort extract, you know, something that has hyaluronic acid, something that's really hydrating. And on top of this, go in with your essencer. Then you will go in with your serum, moisturizer, sunscreen, and so on. Now, on top of this, you go in with your essencer. And essencer is basically a more thicker version of a toner. It's got hyaluronic acid. It's way more hydrating. Many more ingredients like camellia extract, mugwort, centella, some more ingredients that are very nourishing and very, very hydrating. 
Both of these layers together are going to transform your skin. With Korean skincare, you'll notice they use a lot of essentials for the very same reason. Once you're done with these two layers, then go in with your serums and your moisturizer and sunscreen. Once you follow this, your skin is never going to be the same. Obviously, it's going to get better. It is going to be so hydrated and so moisturized. Number six is choosing a variety of lip balms. Don't just stick to one lip balm. Maybe have a lip balm, have a lip balm with SPF, have another lip mask maybe. Get a lip balm that has SPF 20 to 30. This is ideal if you're going to be stepping outdoors in the sun, if you're going for a beach holiday, you're going hiking or just grocery shopping or for a brunch date. You need to protect your lips from the harmful UVA, UVB rays. When we're doing so much for our face and our body, why do we ignore our lips? Now, if you have very dry lips, look for ingredients like shea butter, glycerin, ceramides, very hydrating moisturizing ingredients that reduces all of those cracks reduces all of the dryness nourishes your lips and locks in all of that moisture now if you have hyperpigmentation dark spots on your lips then you need to use ingredients like kojic acid alpha butin vitamin c blood orange extract these ingredients keep an eye out for them because they are so good for the lips on your skin also great for your body and your facial skin you need to choose the right formulation for your lip condition don't just pick up a lip balm because you feel like you need it and then it doesn't work for you and then it goes to waste choose the right ingredients in your lip balms when you look at it this way all of your purchases will be worth your money don't look for a lightweight lip balm if you have very dry lips or if your lips are prone to dryness look for a heavy duty lip balm apply that in your nighttime skincare routine you can also look for a very good lip mask in winters or even if you're sleeping in aircon air conditioning you will have to invest in a good lip mask or a very intensely hydrating lip balm number seven is invest in two different types of moisturizers get a lightweight moisturizer maybe with ingredients that you want vitamin C, maybe it has a little bit of centella, niacinamide, hyaluronic acid, pretty cool stuff, nothing over the top, a nice lightweight moisturizer for daytime. For my combination acne prone skin, I need a lightweight moisturizer for daytime because if I use something that's too creamy, I get really greasy, really sweaty on my skin and it's just not a good time. So I like to use lightweight moisturizers in daytime and in my nighttime, I use the thick creamier ones. If you have very oily skin, you can maybe use a vitamin C moisturizer like a gel based one in the daytime so you don't want to layer too many things on your skin in the nighttime i look for ingredients like ceramides peptides vitamin e shea butter jojoba oil all of these vitamin e fantastic to improve your skin condition really good ingredients to help you age gracefully improve your skin texture i always look out for these ingredients whether it's a thick moisturizer for nighttime or if it's a sleeping mask you can also invest in another moisturizer that doesn't have any active so you can layer it on top of any serums and any actives and number eight is choosing an under eye cream only if necessary if you're using a good moisturizer that has a little bit of vitamin c it's got ceramides hyaluronic acid you don't have to buy another under eye cream because you're anyway applying it all over your face a lot of times i see people use under eye creams when it's not needed under eye creams are expensive guys so use it only if needed if you have puffy under eyes like me if you have maybe dark circles if you have fine lines if you have excessive dryness only then invest in an under eye cream now if you have puffy eyes look for caffeine if you have fine lines if you have dark circles look for caffeine along with bakuchio vitamin c or even retinol this will improve the overall condition around this area i have puffy under eyes so i look for ingredients like caffeine it really helps to reduce all of that puffiness i don't really have dark circles so i can't really comment on that but sometimes i get darkness under my eyes when i've had a rough schedule when i've not slept well when my diet is a little bad when i'm under the weather that's when i look for ingredients like vitamin c to brighten the under eyes apart from this don't forget to change your pillowcases every two to three days you don't want all that bacteria to go back and forth all the sweat all the drool all the skincare on your pillowcase and back to your skin is just not a good time not good at all also change your face towels don't use the same hand towel on your face keep a separate bath for your body separate for your head separate for your hands and separate for your face with your hair towel don't use it on your body and your face all that leftover conditioner leave-in serum all of that on your face and your back is going to make you break out do not do that it's always advisable to keep your towel separate this makes a world of difference and those are all of the tips to help you curate the perfect skincare routine if you're a beginner. I really hope you found this useful. Let me know if you want me to break down some more ingredients for you. If you want me to recommend certain products for you for each step, I'll definitely do that. If you have any doubts, leave them in the comments and I'll surely get back to you. If you enjoyed watching this video, then please hit the thumbs up. All right, you guys, I'm going to take your leave now. But before I go, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my previous videos right here. I will catch you all in the next video. So then take care of yourself and your skin. Bye.